Ladies and gentlemen, I have really cool news for you because yesterday Next.js or Vercel announced a new version of Next.js which will be Next.js 13 and that's pretty cool. They, uh, held, they held a conference, Next.js Conf yesterday, uh, which was on the 25th of October. And if you want to take a look at that for yourself, you can. I'll link the original uh, post and the video in the description so you can take a look for yourself. And what they presented is pretty interesting. And we want to take a look at that in this video. Let me give you a brief overview of what topics we're going to cover and then get into the fun stuff and take a look at what they changed and how that's going to improve A, the code we're rendering on the client and server side. And secondly, the experience that we have as developers in working with Next.js. So first off, that would be a new directory and a directory in Next.js is always pretty cool. For example, in the pages directory, you have a built-in router system, which is really nice. And now they're introducing a new directory called the app directory, which serves three purposes. So first one would be having really easy access to layouts. You could do layouting before in Next.js, uh, it, it was definitely possible, but now it has been advanced. So for example, the state is kept through page switching uh, in whatever the layout is. So if, let's say you had the nav bar as the layout, then every state that would be kept in the nav bar will be kept across uh, you know, page free renders, which really decreases the calculation load on the client side. Also, there is a new way of rendering server components. So before we had like uh, get static props or get server side props. And now we have something called a custom use hook, which comes from React. And that allows for a different way of data fetching in Next.js 13. And then the third purpose will be streaming. So you can actually deliver information to the client statically. And then whenever you need to load data, that will be you know, uh, asynchronously loaded after that. So we're essentially shipping less JavaScript to the client at first, so the page can render faster. Next up, there will be a Turbo Pack integration. If you don't know, Turbo Pack is like the Rust base, like Rust is a coding language, the Rust based successor of Webpack. And that essentially allows for a way better developer experience by uh, being just way faster than Webpack. So for example, let's say you start up your server, that will be much faster and then hot reloading will also be faster uh, and it's just a great addition. Also the uh, next image is gonna be stable, the old next image which a lot of people use actually, about 70% uh, use that in production in Next.js, uh, will be moved to the legacy one and now there's a new stable one which is even better. A feature that is completely new is the new font system so that allows you to uh, statically import fonts through Next.js and basically avoid having separate requests on the web made for them. And then just a very small addition to the next link, the anchor tag that you always had to manually put into the uh, link component is now just built in. You don't have to type it anymore. It's a pretty minor change, but handy nonetheless. Okay, so let's get a bit more into the detail. Let's take a look at the use hook first, because I think it provides some interesting details. So essentially what it does is you call it from your component and then define the actual function above the component. And then you have three methods of data caching. So first one would be force cache. What that means is the data will be cached. So whatever comes back is the response. Uh, will be cached until you decide to invalidate that data. The second option would be no store. So that means the data won't be cached and that would essentially be working quite similarly to get server side props. And then the third method you have is a concept that is also known from the um, incremental static regeneration, which would be incrementally invalidating the cache. So for example, if the last query was less than 10 seconds ago, then it would still use the answer from the cache. But if it's been longer than 10 seconds, then it would use the answer, um, like it would get a new answer that is not cached. Let's get a bit into the Turbo Pack integration because I think that feature is quite neat. And they have a couple of numbers that they reveal in their announcement. So they make the claim that Turbo Pack in Next.js 13 will be 700 times faster than Webpack, 10 times faster than Vite, and 4 times faster code starts than Webpack, which is pretty impressive. And also, Turbo Pack takes 1.8 seconds to boot up. And if you contrast that to Webpack, you can take a guess, 
it is 16.5 seconds according to Vercel, so that is a massive improvement in the developer experience. Also, Turbo Pack has built-in support for things like JSX, TypeScript and CSS. Next up, let's take a look at the new image component because I think that is one of the main features of Next.js. I think it's even the first thing they uh, have like in their docs as the first, you know, main argument to use Next.js. It's the image and now it's become even better in Next.js 13 um, by one, shipping less client-side JavaScript. Secondly, it's easier to style and configure before um, like on the legacy image that it is now, it was a bit more unintuitive. So you had like the uh, the layout, which was fill, intrinsic, whatever. And then depending on which layout you had, you always uh, you also had the object fit. And it wasn't really intuitive. Now they did it more intuitive. The new image also requires an alt tag by default. So that promotes accessibility. Might be a bit annoying in just developing, like uh, quickly bootstrapping a project. Um, but it does promote accessibility, so I guess that is a good change. And it's just faster because native lazy loading does not need any hydration. If you have been using the image in Next.js like 12.2 or whatever the last version was and want to upgrade to Next.js 13 um, but don't want to manually change all the images because you'd have to because they moved the old image to the uh, legacy one, and now the new one would be imported differently. They have an NPX for that, that does all that for you. You can check it out in the documentation for Next.js 13, which I will link in the description. Now let's get into the font system. And I think that's a really interesting change. So they claim it automatically optimizes your fonts, including custom fonts, and you can get rid of external network requests essentially improving privacy and performance. Also with that now available uh, custom font system in Next.js 13, you can completely prevent a, a cumula cumulative layout shift, which is also a web vital, so that's pretty cool. Now, I think those were the most important changes. Now, there are some small minor changes that don't really matter that much, like the link component that now has a built-in anchor tag. Yeah, that's that's neat, but that's nothing groundbreaking. There are a couple of changes to the middleware, so now it's easier to set uh, headers on the middleware response that you send back to the user. It's just uh, become a bit more intuitive and easier, but again, nothing groundbreaking. Okay, all in all, I think that was pretty much it. If you want to take a very detailed look for yourself, I'll link the uh, post from Next.js in the description. And if you want to actually try it out and work with Next.js 13, you can. So there's a command for it. You can run uh, npx create next app at latest, and that will essentially uh, bootstrap a 13, like version 13 Next.js app for you. So you can just experiment with all the new features. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I'll link the original blog post and the keynote they did in the description so you can take a very detailed look for yourself. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for now. Have a good one and bye bye.